door's unlocked. What time is it? 11.15. Dead on. I'll wait for you here. You see, you do. I just said I will. Well, I'll be off. You'll be late. Don't rush me. Bong, bong, bong. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. Your but... sense of humour can be very tasteless at times, Raymond. I'm going in. It is today. Definitely. Ah, Mr. Daly, we've been looking for you. Dr. Hardman's been bussing. I haven't been feeling too good myself. Um, is it, uh... Do you drink very much, Mr. Daly? Excuse me? Your drinking habits. Would you say that you were a heavy drinker? Or do you tend to drink only socially? Uh, socially. Uh, no, I, I must admit, I am a very social person. Really? Well, the nature of my work, um, entrepreneurial. I have to conduct a lot of my business informally. Um, dinner parties, soirees, that sort of thing. So you'd say that you probably drank more than the recommended weekly limit? Which is? A couple of glasses of wine a day or a couple of whiskies. If, if, if I'm busy. Uh, but it may, may be a little bit more. Smoke? Uh, no, thank you. I just put one out. How many do you smoke? Oh, one, two cigars a day. That's very odd. Oh, my God. How long? Although you haven't got an ulcer, your stomach is extremely inflamed. That's what's been causing the pain. You're actually very strong. But if you keep abusing your body in the way that I suspect you are, then an ulcer can't be far away. If that happens, then surgery may be the only answer. Surgery? I'm going to give you a course of tablets. And I want you to stop smoking and drinking. At least for a couple of months, until things settle down. Oh, completely? That's usually what I mean when I say stop. Oh, and there's a diet sheet. Avoid all fatty and fried foods. And try and get plenty of relaxation. So I'll be back in the pink. Yeah, with respect, Doctor. Enjoying a quiet smoke and a drink while I'm winding in front of a roaring fire is exactly what I do to relax. Don't worry. A lot of that's just habit. You'll soon find something else to do with your hands. And as you say, it isn't as if you're a heavy drinker. You look terrible, Arthur. Is it bad news? The worst. I must say, I'm impressed, Arthur. I didn't know you had it in you. Nah, it's just a matter of willpower, Dave. You know, I must admit, until all this happened, I didn't realise just what sort of pressure the modern executive has to operate under. Ray said the doctor told you it was tobacco and booze that were stitching you. Ray doesn't understand. Well, talking to Ray, if you see him before I do, would you remind him he starts minding one of my properties tonight? Problems? No, one of my tenants turned out to be more upwardly mobile than I gave him credit for. Done a runner, earn a month's rent. I thought you always charged three months up front. Technicality, Dave. Are uh, you worried about the break-in, sir? Well, what could be more tempting than one plush, unattended Desres? Do you sell much of this? Yeah, that's very popular. Comes from France. Yeah, so does rabies. Look, you give us a tomato juice, lots of Worcester sauce. Are you sure about it, Arthur? I mean, it's very spicy, this Worcester. No, 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 it's all right. It's... You know, I think this should be obligatory. Every few months, give the fabric a chance to recover from the indecent pounding that we give it. How long have you been off it? Um, five hours, 27 minutes, and I feel fine.
there used to be a road through here once. Where is he then? I told you, I don't know. He's usually here by now. Well, when he gets back, tell him Mr. McLeish called and tell him I'll be expecting to hear from him oh, very hang soon. hang on, hang on. He knows what it's all about. All right, I'm going to have to take it down. Right. Mr. Mc... Mc what? McLeish. McLeish. Well, how'd you spell that? Is that a big M, small C or what? Are you trying to upset me? Oh, I've got a terrible memory. I didn't sleep too well last night either. By the time Mr. Daly turns out, I've probably forgotten half of this. Now... What was it about? Mr. Mac... That's what it's about. And the other 73 tens he sell me. Here, yeah, hang on. Tell him I'll return the lot personally when I get my money back. Come on, get the gates up. Don't you start getting aggressive with me. Arthur, you ain't gonna believe this, but some mad Scotsman... Arthur. I've sold them. What, my best of Anna's? After what you said yesterday, about giving you the support to see it through. Those were the utterances of a man in shock. Give me a drink. Well, that went as well. Sort of a package. You're not a bad little learner. It's all in a cash tray. Raymond, I suddenly feel very peculiar. Yeah, I'm not feeling on top of the world myself. Well, that flat, I'm not staying there another night. Oh, yeah. can't you see I'm a man on the brink? Don't you think I've got enough problems? Well, it's hardly the ill one. No one's going to nick anything. Look, those fitments may not be to your taste, but there's many a discerning crook would disagree with you. Arthur, there are penicillin experiments happening in the sink. The shagpole moves of its own accord. Why don't you just let me lock it up? I've got the only key. You've got the only key by the one my last tenant absconded with. The market's probably being flooded with duplicates even now. All right, all right. Well, how long? I should have the locks changed by Wednesday. Wednesday? Quicker if you work faster. Me? Yes. Look, have we got any of those boxes of liqueur chocolates that we had last Christmas? Arthur, sit down and relax. Arthur! I'm gonna make a cup of tea. I'll have mine in the glass, with ice and a slice. What are you washing the walls for? And Mr McLeish called round for you earlier and threw paint all over him. He's done what? Yeah, he said he'd drop the rest of the paint round once you'd given him a refund. I hope you disabused him. You're joking. He was lobbing paint all over the place. Well, who does he think he is? Gawler, man. Hello? This is Mr Arthur Daly. Could I speak to Mr McLeish? Thank you. Mr McLeish? Uh, this is Mr Arthur Daly. Now, about this paint... We... You, you... You'll have to speak slower. I missed most of that. Yes, that's quite clear. Now, now, what is the problem with the colour? But that is royal blue. No, 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 no. You're thinking of English royal blue. What you bought is Spanish royal blue. King Carlos has it slapped all over his palace. Well, I'm very sorry it looks like that, but that paint was bought as seen. I do not give refunds. Goodbye. Never stick your nose in a tin of paint and think that's the colour. It all changes as soon as the air hits it. All sorted. He's building a old folks' home. Says the paint makes it look like a brothel. Threatened all sorts of things. What are you going to do with it, then? Learn my lesson. Never do business from here, say. I was told he was kosher. The man's obviously a complete crook. What a morning. Come on, lunch break! It's, it's only 11 o'clock. They are bad for you. They repeat. It wouldn't be the only thing that's done that this morning. All I am saying is they don't call him Mad Benny for nothing. Dave, all the info you have given me thus far on Benny McLeish 
He's about as reliable as his national football team. All I said was he pays top cash for the right gear. But I also told him he's got a temper. He did a few months in the neck a while back. What for? GBH was a spare wheel of a dormobile. Mind you, he's very good with Alsatians. <laughs> People he falls out with. Look, I've met tougher nuts than Benny McLeish. I'm not going to start erring from my principles just because he threatens me. As long as it is only threats. <laughs> visiting St. Peter's and not banging off a couple of Hail Marys. What is? Coming here and not having a drink. You off the Yeah. Same again, please, Dave. Yeah, listen, all that stuff about Benny turning nasty, you've never actually met him, have you? No. No, well, there you are, you see? People exaggerate. Things get blown up all out of proportion. My source was reliable. Who's that? Pete Hughes. Psycho Pete? Yeah. Pete, they'll never take me alive, Hughes. He reckoned Benny was a hard man. It will start to get easier. I think you're doing really well. No way selling the first 48 hours are the worst. I think you're overreacting. You heard what Dave said. Benny's got a reputation. Oh, it's a coincidence. We well, think about it. He's not going to kill you for just a few tins of dodgy paint, is he? There was inches in it. It's just a strain of you trying to keep off the booze and cigars. It's making you imagine things. Look, I did not imagine several tons of diesel trying to part my hair. And just drink your coffee. Is that keep caffeinated, by the way? Well, just drink it, and I'll go and see if the garage is finished having a look at that steering. Took out of a job. Hey, you're going to be all right. Just remember what the doc said to you. Relax. Don't look round. Arthur, what? I said don't look round. Drive normally. Head for the Winchester. What's the problem? One of Benny's men attacked me. Are you injured? No, no, no. I fought him off. Look at me. I'm a nervous wreck. I better have a stiff brandy before I start palpitating. Arthur, sit down and relax. You've got to get a grip, Arthur. You're behaving deranged. Look, I've denied all normal forms of sustenance and someone's trying to kill me. Is it any wonder? A walk in a ward during a cafe does not constitute attempted murder. You did not see the look in his eyes. Oh, Dave, you try and convince him. It's all in his mind. I need the loot. And I'll take that with me. Ray's right, right, Arthur. I mean, Benny may be a bit nasty, but I don't think he try and do you in. Oh, my God! Dave, what? Dave, look, upstairs. What? Broke my crutches. What about him? Edward Fox! 
Never. They had a jackal. He had a gun in his crutches. He was going to assassinate some French geezer. He's got a pot on his leg. He's looking for me. Oh, my God, do something about it. What? Sort him out. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'd appreciate it if you'd let me put your crutches outside. You what? <laughs> Normally they wouldn't be a problem, but you see, it's, it's my friend. He's driving me mad. And there are the lawbreakers, and when the lawbreakers break the law, we arrest them. It's perfect. But then God created Arthur Daly, and everything got blurred. Desk sergeant said he had some information for us. Could be genuine. <laughs> You college boys, always prepared to believe the best of people. Sergeant Molly, there's a call for you. They are quite safe, these places, aren't they? Sir? Well, you know all them stories about bands of armed vigilantes storming police stations and taking terrible liberties with people inside. That only happens in America, sir. Is that Mr. Morley? Yeah, it's, um, it's Ray. Raymond Daly. How thick are these walls? I've no clue, sir. Thick enough, say, to stop a runaway juggernaut. We haven't had that many cases of runaway juggernauts crashing through the station, sir, so I wouldn't know. Then no need to take that tone of voice from me, young man. You're a little bit on edge, aren't you? Yeah. That's your smoke. Oh, oh. I'm having a vision. Oh. Oh. oh, I'll never forget this. Oh. T743. <laughs> Sarge, that was Daly's nephew. Can we keep an eye out for his Uncle Arthur, who's not been seen since he legged it from the Winchester and he disturbed state this lunchtime? Apparently, he's come over all funny on account of his enforced abstinence from the weed and the vodka. Sarge? He's having withdrawal symptoms. No light? No. No light? No, I don't have they any matches. They've done this deliberately, person, didn't sir. they? They no, put you in to no, put me through the emotional mangle. So I tell them all I know. Sir, you came to us. Can't, can't, can't you go and get a light? I'm not allowed to leave you. <laughs> can't we find two bits of wood to rub together? Just in the nick of time. What you doing? I've just been talking to your Raymond. Ah, is this yours? You can't do this. It's infringing my civil liberties. Now then, Mr. Daly, how exactly would you like to spoil my day for me? Am I right, Sergeant, in thinking you are a man who does not believe in sensitive counselling? Ray warned me you were suffering a bit. Apparently, doctors' orders are playing havoc with your imagination. The arrogance of youth, which, given your normal recollection of the truth, makes the mind boggle. Still, we mustn't be biased. What can we do for you? I want police protection. <laughs> I won't hear another word. You cannot march into a police station and demand protection because someone points a crutch at you. You should be down there now doing some house to housing, not casting aspersions. You are asking us to stretch it a bit, Mr. Daly. But you've heard of Mad Benny's reputation. You play games with bullies, there's a chance you'll get hurt. Look, Benny is trying to nobble me because a business deal turned out better for me than it did for him. Surely there's a law against that. Oh, it's the business deal again, then, is it, Arthur? Well, perhaps if you'd like to shed a little light on the exact nature of this business deal and why Benny's so upset, we might be in a better position to evaluate the threat to you. It's you will have to live with a guilt. Arthur, I came as soon as they told me. Quizzling. We only hope you can sleep nights nice without half a dozen Mogadon to help you on your way. Don't pop back round about me little green men chasing you, Arthur. Who'd have thought it a daily ending up colluding with a law? I don't think you realise what effect this whole business is having. Well, I had to say something. I don't want people to start thinking you've lost your marbles. Oh, very considerate. Donald, I appreciate you're a busy man, but this is an emergency. Listen. Whack the ball a bit harder, miss a few holes out, nobody will notice. Yeah, all right, Tar, see you then. Ta-da. 
Raymond. I'm prepared to believe that your bell in the old bill and speaking personally to Morley was motivated by some peculiar sense of duty towards me. Therefore, I'm going to give you a second chance. Well, thanks, Arthur. In the absence of any police protection whatsoever, I'm appointing you my official bodyguard. What do you mean? What I say. You follow me everywhere. You taste my food, inspect any unusual packages I may receive, and in the event of any direct attempt on my person, you shield me from it. You're pulling my leg. Never believe the police, Ray. When they say the coast is clear, that is the time to keep your head down. Ready? Right, go. Well, I'm going to need some more dodge for this job, Arthur. What for? Well, I need to get all the gear. Gear? What gear? The bodyguard stuff. Sunglasses, dark suit. Oh, yeah, one of those bits of wire you stick in your ear. Creeping up on me like that. I got here early. I was just having a poke round. Oh, would you mind doing your poke in somewhere where it can be seen in future? And where were you? It could have been some sort of psychotic. Sorry, Arthur, I was just noticing. That paint really has dried a disgusting colour. It's a very large amount to suddenly increase your premium by. You haven't been told you've got something nasty, have you? Uh -huh. <laughs> the company will check with your doctor if they're suspicious. Uh, apart from a nagging Veruca, you could run me in the London Marathon, Donald. It's just that with life assurance, most people fix a rate of payment and stick to it, unless there's disaster on the horizon. Well, that's your Englishman, Donald. Slave to routine. No, 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 no. Business is tripping along nicely, and it seemed to me like a good occasion to add the odd extra shekel to the future security of early doors. And you uh, want to increase your personal accident cover by 75 per cent? Well, I'd advise against that, Arthur. I mean, you're not in a particularly high-risk area. That's what they said to Louis XVI. Uh, fair enough, Arthur. You know what you're doing. Very true, Donald. Very true. I'm a patient man, but this is taking forever. And nothing's happened. Get out there, find him, and hurt him. It's worse for you like that, Arthur. That's memory lane. Do not judge other people by your own standards, Dave. I'm simply trying to find a patch of clean air amongst all this filth. How much longer you stand out, Arthur? You always want to rush, Ray. Relax. I'm supposed to be guarding Colditz, remember? Colditz, Dave. That self-contained apartment I've got Raymond temporarily minding. You've been there. Have I? Yeah. When Peter Osgood scored that goal in the cup final, you were a bit tired and emotional. <laughs> oh, what a goal, eh? Yeah. I remember I passed out on a nice bit of pink shag pile in the living room. There you are. Youth of the day, they don't recognise quality even when it's sticking up through their toes. Well, that was 20 years ago. 20 years. Yeah, but you're still quite happy to slope off back there and forget about me, aren't you? Those are mean streets out there, Raymond. I know, and I'll be walking them if I miss the last bus. Oh, dear. Poor Cinderella. Yeah. Get yourself a cab. Cheers. I'll take it out your next week's wages. You can't stop here all night, Arthur. Look, when I find a non-alcoholic drink that agrees with me, we'll go. Dave? Well, you started with mineral water, and there was tomato juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice, apple juice, I tried lime juice, cola, ginger beer, and you're on dandelion and burdock there. I think you've been through the lot, Arthur. I'll have a glass of tap water, please. Night, lads. Good night. Ah, glad I caught you. Oh, I thought you were gone. I've been doing some checking up on McLeish. I thought we might have been harsh with Daly. You were? Apparently there was an altercation about a load of paint that Daly sold to McLeish. McLeish says that he was furious about it at the time, but now he's managed to offload it, and so that's an end to it as far as he's concerned. No vendetta. Ye of little faith. Yeah, but it always worries me making decisions when you've only heard one side of the argument. Still, seems you were right about Daly. <coughs> Yeah, don't you think you should send young Raymond home, Arthur? He looks knackered. Yeah, I suppose so. Same again, Dave. Yeah. 
trouble with the youth of today. They got no stamina. <laughs> you nearly caught me there, Arthur. Cheers. It's worth a try. Come on. There you go. So. Oh, I forgot. You've got a good end. Her indoors has gone to her sister's. So I'm on my own, you see. Sitting target. And I knew you'd appreciate the company. Great. Oh, it's a bit on the parky side, isn't it? I must get that looked at. Mind you, wonderful views. Not one o'clock in the morning, they ain't. I usually go out like a light. Getting these cravings don't help. I'm too agitated to sleep. Well, I'm not. And that's exactly what I intend to do. I'll see you in the morning, yeah? That aftershave of yours is strong stuff, isn't it? Arthur, it costs a fortune. But you don't have any trouble with insect bites. You're supposed to dab it or not embalm yourself in it. Ah, oh, now that smells as nature intended. Yours is on the table. Oh, oh God, you wouldn't give that to Bugs Bunny. It's all on your diet sheet. No, that's just a guide. Muesli, bacon, egg, sausage is all interchangeable. Not here, it's not. I made a list of things I need. What things? Oh, clothes, toiletries from Shea Daly. Hang on. How long are you planning on staying? Well, until things quieten down. But things will never settle down, will they? Because they don't exist in the first place. I've told you, it's stress firing your imagination. Do I look like a man without his faculties? Am I frothing at the mouth for vodka or a cigar? The answer is no. Arthur, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning. You wait till dinner time. I am completely in control of myself. Though know it's short on creature comforts, you have convinced me this is the only place he won't be able to trace me to. Now, be a good lad and go and get those things for me. Don't bolt your food. You'll get indigestion. I'll finish anything you can't manage. Dave. Oh, right. What are you doing here? Touch of the Arthurs. We are out for another couple of hours. I need some help, mate. Arthur's still sweating about MacLeish. He thinks he's trying to kill him for a few pots of paint. I've told him he's ridiculous, but he's convinced. Come here, look at this. The only key. He insists I lock him in when I go out and then put it in my shoe. What's that? So that if one of Benny's boys attacks me, they won't be able to find it. Unbelievable. Well, what do you want me to do? I want to see Benny. Yeah. He's the only person to be able to convince Arthur not to worry. Where can I find him? Well, I've got his address. But... What are you going to do about a paint? I'll tell him I'll make sure Arthur sorts it out with him. Well, you take care. So how many do you smoke now? 30, 40 a day? A dramatic depiction of an alcoholic's attempt to stay dry throughout the last weekend. That's why I come to see you. I'm sure we can sort out this paint misunderstanding. If you can persuade Arthur, you're not trying to damage him. I know it's ridiculous, but like I said, it's the withdrawal symptoms. What do you want me to do? Well, can't you give him a call? He's staying with me at one of his properties. I know he is. Hey? You've been very hard to nail down, but it seems we've got there at last. Juggernauts are no my style. But I'm afraid your uncle is a far better judge of character than you give him credit for. Arthur is in need of a lesson in business etiquette. So a couple of my boys are on their way over right now. You're joking. I'm no man renowned for my sense of humour. Well, so? So what? So what do you expect me to do? Stand by and watch? Quite frankly, I don't care what you do. 
Look at you. You really fancy yourself, don't you? Well, let me tell you, you're nothing. You're amateur night out, no worth the price of admission. Barra boy. Then let me tell you, I'm a daily, and that means something. If my uncle is so much as grazed by one of your bully boys, then I pity you, McLeish. Quite frankly, I pity you. Yeah, Park. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Right, hang on. Sergeant's Ray Daly again. What is it this time? He says Arthur's been kidnapped. Uh, Morley, it's serious. McLeese told me he'd sent a couple of the boys over. Yeah, I must have just missed them. I'm positive. I locked him in here when I went out. Yeah, yeah, of course there's signs of a struggle. I mean, the smashed glass all over the kitchen, it's a right mess. Uh, Morley, you are the police. You've got to help. Oh, come on, how do I know where they've taken him? I'll call you back. So what's the scam, Sarge? I've checked Benny once. You and Ray both. Since Benny admitted to sending a couple of heavies round. What do we do? Never a criminal around when you want one. Come on. Much as it pains me, I suppose we'd better pay Mr. McLeish a visit. I'm, I'm sorry, mate. I, I thought I knew someone in here. I'm sorry, mate. Uh, I'll have another packet of them cigars and uh, another couple of packets of spicy nices. Uh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine.
Gentlemen, what can I do for you this time? That's £28.17. I'm sorry, we don't accept credit cards. I don't think I'm hearing right. Cash or cheque only. What about your flexible thingy? Cash or cheque only. What can I have for £2.38? I'm not the kind of person to start yelling police harassment. I'm oh, pleased you view it that way. But my solicitor is. Uh, now, hang on a minute. No, you hang on a minute. I've already told your colleague that I haven't a clue what's happened to Arthur Daly. But if you two want to keep coming around here and hinting that I do, that's fine. But from now on, it'll cost you a lot of money. I'd advise you against making threats, Mr. McLeish. A police officer. I don't think we right. need to detain Mr. McLeish any longer. Constable. Does he think we like coming round here? He's got some nerve threatening us. You should have booked him for obstructing the course. What have we got to go on? The word of a con artist like Arthur Daly, who at the best of times is unreliable, and at the moment is half crazed trying to keep up artificial stimulants. What about Ray? Oh, yes, Ray Mondo. The one person in the world who regards Daly Senior as a creditable role model. We haven't got a leg to stand on. I hope Arthur has. You're all right. Yeah, I found somewhere that takes plastic. Come on, get in a car. Yeah, thanks for my hat. Hey, you're in big trouble. What? I'll take care of that. Hey, look at me that. You'll oh, be God, in big trouble. Come on. Hey, come on, hey, come on give me that. You can't have it. Look, 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 look. Come on, give me a smoke at least. No. Well, give me a supper, but... No. Give me something. Arthur, oh, leave it alone. A shot. Staff illness. That's the fifth in as many minutes. It's our busiest time, Arthur. You'll ruin us. Why don't you let me go out to the car and get my groceries? Benny could be on the other side of that door. Anyway, now is not the time to give in, Arthur. Get through this, and the other seven weeks will be no trouble. It's a matter of convincing the police Benny's for real. Well, if they saw me shaking, they wouldn't have any doubts. I think they might put that down to something else, Arthur. Thank you. We're closed. It's the law. Thought I might find you here. You're the first bit of decent luck. Yeah, you won't say that when I'm finished. Arthur Daly. Afternoon, Sergeant. And looking so well after the various attempts on your person. Yeah, I was coming round the station to tell you. I found him on the high street. Oh, that is fortunate. It's just as well since I was coming round here to tell you to stuff your theories about Benny being after Arthur. We haven't got a scrap of evidence, and McLeish is getting rather upset about the number of visits we're paying him. What I suggest you both do is get yourselves a good bottle of whiskey and go home and bloody well relax. Your flight out of Phoenix, that's the one. I'll never be able to watch that film again in the same light. <laughs> you what? Well, when that bloke half inches of water when it's in short supply. I mean, it's all very well to criticise frailty, but, I mean, when it's your back against the wall... Well, you want a glass of water, Arthur? You have one. What is happening to me? Oh, sit down, Arthur. I'll, um... I'll put the kettle on. Oi. Go and pack some things. Go on, we're gonna make for the motorway. Hey, no, hold on, Arthur. The only way we're gonna convince the police now is if they actually catch Ben and his henchmen having a go at you. So we're gonna have to set them up. 
What? I won't be a minute. Raymond, leave it to me. I appreciate you might be a bit sceptical, but that's what I'm saying. OK, we'll do it. Just like that? It's our duty to serve. As long as you're sure he'll be there. He's bound to. He's one of those blokes who can't rest of the settle the score. Yeah, but, well, shouldn't we have some sort of signal so you can leap in before the actual assault takes place? I think you can let us be the best judge of that. OK, I'll see you later, yeah? Bye. Bye bye. Ray! Ray! Snap! You're in the throat, all right? Shit! Fuck! Here! Come on! Oh, he went through the kitchen! Be polite, be helpful, be forgetful. Ray, Ray, what? I'm perspiring. Oh, come on, Arthur, it's not much further. Oh, when we get there, you'll be safe till I sort things out with Benny. Has it got an oxygen tent at this place? <laughs> come on, Arthur, what keep it up. <laughs> Almost there. <sighs> <sighs> You're gonna leave me here. Don't worry. They won't let you come to any harm. No, I'm sure. Well, come on. Oh, right. Dave, I need to borrow the van. It'll only be 20 minutes. Keys on the back pocket. Yeah, what's the problem? It's Benny's henchman. I'll tell you later. Keep an eye on Arthur for me. Oh. You all right, Arthur? Uh, uh. Uh. Are you sure about this, Arthur? I'll be hidden in there, Dave. They might come looking out front. Yeah, well, you go careful. There's not a lot of room in there. Eh? Come with the hour, Dave. Come with the hour. Dave, you've been burgled. There's nothing here. Someone's absconded with a drink. Uh, I'm stock taking. Yeah. All the booze is out here in the passage. Good thinking, Arthur. Yeah, I thought so too. Come on, we got an appointment at the King's Head. I'm on my way. <laughs> Thin crust, Hawaiian special, no olives. Ta. Oh, very nice. Look, about tonight, are you sure you don't want me to organise something? Not unless there's a game of dominoes down the social club. Well, you know best, sir. Yes, you? I do know best. And I know that if we turn up at the King's Head, apart from Benny and his missus, we'll be the only ones there. And he'll get straight on to his brief. It is no accident that my nose does not compete for space with my cheeks, Ray. Or that, in fact, I have my own set of teeth. Look, there won't be any fighting. That's the old point. We're just after Benny's verbiage at Morleyan Park, plus several FD constables step in and end the show. It's all arranged. It's not the sort of thing a man with gastric complications should be trying. It's the one way we'll get him off your back once and for all. Hold on. Right then. I need something to steady me, Ray. Anything. 
bottle of vodka, half a dozen cigars. I'm really proud of the way you're managing, Arthur. Look, look at that. If they could connect me up to the national grid now, they'd save a fortune. Come on, we can't keep Morley and his boys waiting. You two have got a nerve after what you've done. Good evening, Mr. McLeish. This is your last chance to salvage something from a deal with the dailies. A goodwill gesture. Your money back, less 20% for our time and effort. 20%? Where'd you get that? And that's an end to it. No more aggro. What makes you think I'll accept? You can't afford to keep chasing after Arthur. I know the police have been checking. Take it while you can, McLeish. I will. Ray, I think, I think we better go back inside. It's all right, Arthur. Alice, phone the police. That footballing rabble's back. Not again. They've even brought the manager along this time. Trouble. King's head. Leave it to me, Arthur. So, Benny, you just couldn't leave it, could you? Had to bring your thugs along. And now you're going to assault us, eh? And now, you're going to assault us. Don't forget I'm with Bupa. OK, boys. <laughs> All right, Arthur. I think the pleasure's mine. Never, Sergeant? You better ask Mad Benny that. He'd be the best person to explain when he comes round. Do you need a doctor, Ray? Oh, I'd perish the thought. All he needs is a couple of hours in there, which I'll be quite happy to provide. Hey, what about a doctor, Arthur? No, no, no. You'll never get here by closing time, Ray. Here well, we go. no good looking in there. Why not? Oh, come on, Arthur. Am I going to bring the real stuff? I'm a daily. That means something. Of course it does, Ray. Of course it does. <laughs> yeah, but what, what, what is this? Well, that's last night's evening paper. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? I'm completely strapped. I haven't got a groat. Come on in, Arthur. Good boy. Only one, Good though, boy. right? 